Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After and I am back with another gardening project. So if you watched my video yesterday where I was doing my weekly maintenance and transplanting a bunch of salvia babies that reseeded themselves from last year, you know that I still have lots of things that have reseeded themselves in the garden that I need to deal with. So since we <laughs> couldn't finish it all yesterday, we are, we are back, but it is not the next day. That was Tuesday, today's Friday. And despite the best laid plans, I really wanted to do this on Wednesday, but we had another one, two severe thunderstorms all day, Wednesday and Thursday. It is supposed to be hot, hot, hot the next couple days. So I'm a little disappointed because when you're transplanting things, especially baby things like these vincas that have receded from last year, if you can do that before a rainstorm, that is the best. The salvias we um, transplanted, some of them were itty bitty. Like I was not sure they were going to survive and they all looked great because they had two days of constant water after I planted them. So I really wish I would have been able to get to all these vinca babies and the zinnias and the lamb's ear that we're going to be dividing before the rain. But it is what it is. I'm one person. I can only do so many things in a day. So today we're going to be focusing. I have, I counted 10 zinnias that reseeded themselves from a zinnia plant I put out in the garden from my porch last year. I'm going to redistribute those down the way because they're, they're all right in here, which makes sense. The plant was in between these three cone flowers. And so they're all right around the cone flowers and the lobelia and um, the snapdragons, but they're just not in good places. They're not, some are really close. Some are a little too far. They're just not where I want them. So I'm going to transplant them all further down in the garden where I have um, a space. I've got four spaces where I've got snapdragons, batches of 12 snapdragons that were beautiful all spring, but they're just about done. It gets really hot here. I'm in zone 8B, Alifric and Bambi, y'all. So um, about July, mid-June to July, it just gets too hot here for the snapdragons. They're a cold weather plant. Um, they do great in the winter and spring here, and then they die out midsummer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna transplant those zinnias and all these Vinca babies in amongst those snapdragons, just kind of like there's two snapdragons. I'm gonna put something right in the middle. That way, right as those snapdragons, I think they've got one more flush of blooms. And then as they're dying back, the, these things that are just starting to come in will be really putting on some size and starting to bloom. So it should be a nice succession of spring to summer plantings that I didn't have to pay for since all these things receded. <laughs> so we're gonna start with the Venia since I only have 10 of those. And then that will give me a good boundary of where the zinnias start and stop um, to put vincas on either side. And then I've got all of these vincas here. I, I did a lot of vincas last year because I got four or five flats for really inexpensive. So they were everywhere. I'll try to put a picture, but I'm going to start here. I am going to leave some right here. I want them to kind of fill in in front of these salvia and the lambs here. But like you can see my petunia, these, these are super tunia vista bubblegum, proven winners. And they get massive. And there's, there's vinca babies all underneath these petunias. So I am going to definitely move those because I want the petunias to shine and I don't want them to be overcrowded by the vinca. So I'm going to move all the vincas away from the petunias, redistribute them in this space redistribute them down amongst the snapdragons. This is just one spot where I've got vinca babies. I've got them over here in front of these petunias. I've got them down the way. Like I said, I probably had them in eight or nine spots last year and they've come back really heavily like this and probably three or four spaces. So that is the goal. Um, once I get those two things done, I have probably four or five lambs here that are just not just beautiful. I mean, like these ones are beautiful. 
Well, sorry, I just saw a gladiolus bloom falling over. I need to stake it. <laughs> um, but these ones stay kind of a better size. The ones on this side of the walkway, they get a crap ton. They get a lot more sun. And um, so they get big and they're starting to crowd out some of the things in this flower bed. That's okay. I'm just going to divide them. When I first got these, they were in gallon cans. I cut them in half. I went from 18 plants to 32, planted them all out. I came through the beginning of this season. I divided them um, to come into the front of the bed, probably about 10 of them. And I'm going to come through and I'm going to take, I counted, I want 10 divisions. And when I say divisions off these bigger plants, I don't mean I'm going to cut them in half, although I could. I still want the plants to be beautiful where they are. I'm just going to come in and I'll show you. I'm going to cut off, kind of pull plants off the sides of these things so then I can move to other locations. We have the whole new flower bed around the tree that could use some lambs there. So I went around and counted. I've got at least 10 spots, probably more because I didn't count the little part at the bottom probably like 15 spots where I want lamb's ear. Um, so I'm just going to take some little baby lamb's ear divisions off these big plants and I'm going to move them over to that bed. And by next year, they'll be as big as these. These ones here are probably, probably about three times bigger than they were last year. The ones on this side are probably like 10 times bigger. So like I've said before, if you do not want lamb's ear to take over your garden, don't plant it. I planted it because I want it to become a ground cover. I want my iris and my glads and my fox gloves and all these tall, pretty things to just be able to come up out of it. And then if I need to remove it in places, I will. And if I decide eventually it's too invasive, I won't plant it at the next garden. But we've been talking for a long time. So we're going to start with the zinnias. Then we're going to do the vincas. Then we're going to do the lambs here and then we'll probably need a long break. <laughs> Let's start. All right, y'all. So I've got you zoomed in. I've got a whole bunch of zincas, zincas, zinnias right here out of frame. And then I've got one, two big ones and a little one right here. Um, around this cone flower and those are the first two that I'm gonna do so to get them out of here all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my shovel I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna try to take these out with as much of the roots as possible do that down Let's see what I've got There we go. Got quite a bit of roots on that guy. Come in and do this one even more delicately because we don't want to disturb this cone flower. There we go. So these are the two biggest. They should have the biggest roots, but I haven't let any of them grow too big to have extensive root systems. So I'm just putting them in my bucket. Get this little one while we're here. You can leave any dirt that's clinging to the roots. Just kind of trying to take off what isn't clinging to the roots. And this one has a Vinca baby as well. I'm going to pull him out I don't want him to go to the Xenia patch. We've got our three here. And we're going to go down and we're going to plant these three so that y'all can see how we do it. Okay, so you can see our snapdragons here. You're going to start putting these guys in and you can see they're starting to wilt just a little. I'm being out of the ground. So, I'm gonna start 
just enter plants in them. I'm going to start with the littlest ones so we won't need as much space here. Like any animals, we'll give them a good peek. There's a little one, there we go. Just put them in. Backfill. Snug them up. Got a big tree down here, so it's often pretty root rooty. Lots of roots. And you could use an auger for this. I typically don't worry about it when when these things don't have a lot of roots. But here's our tallest one. Put him in. Tight, snug. I'm trying to do this so y'all can see, so I hope you can. And then as soon as you get them planted, water. It's a catch-22. The smaller ones typically will stand up faster because they're not as big, but the bigger ones have more established roots. So we're just going to baby them, come out and water them until they are uh, doing well. At least once a day, they do have water running through these beds, but we'll give them a little extra. But I'm going to go ahead and put y'all on fast forward. And this is three of the seven. Now, if these two tall ones really struggle, I will come through and uh, cut them off about a third of the plant type. So about there. And that would just give him a, his roots a little less to fuss with. that stick in as a little support and there you go let's let's do it All right, so now it is all planted. You can see they are snug as a bug. I wish I'd had some more to keep going back around this rose, but they go from about here up and then they go further back on this side, which this petunia and there's a homestead verbena back here on this side will fill in more here. So I can always, as I start putting binkas here, I've got lots more of those. I can always go from here and fill in that way. So let's go ahead. We're gonna do the vincas now. Honestly, we are doing it the exact same way, except the vinca roots. Um, got lots more in one section. So we may not be doing individual vinca transplants. We might just pull up a little shovelful, move that shovelful, 
um, and put them in. Some of them will be big enough to transplant by themselves, but some of those little itty bitty, like one inch vincas, wouldn't make sense to move that whole one by itself. Just move a little group of them. And then if some of them don't make it, you'll have others that will. Let's do vinca. Okay, so I went ahead, I thinned this whole area out, but there's still plenty of Inca to fill in, probably way more than I actually need in this place. I mean, if I was planting Vinca from like a six pack from the store, I would do like one, two, three, four, five, six in this whole area. So as this fills in, we might still need to weed it out a little bit, but I also don't want to get rid of too many at the beginning because some of the ones I transplanted down the way may not make it. I may need to move some of these more established ones and fill in. So let's go ahead down the way and I'll show you. We started the swoop on this side. I did go ahead and I just pulled all the bitty babies from underneath the petunia. We went here. I did not go in around the cone flowers. I do want those to keep filling in until there's cone flowers there. I did a little swoop around the lobelia. I'm not sure. Um, it does this where it flops really bad after the rain. Now you can see there's lots of new growth down here. So I'm not sure. Like, am I supposed to be coming through and deadheading this? Is that why it's flopping? Because it needs a haircut and it's bloomed out and it needs to be cut back? It is supposed to get quite big. I'm not sure. I've never had this before. So let me know if you know about that. But then you see I did come through this swoop. Went all through the snapdragons. I'm going to let this homestead um, purple verbena and the lamb's ear kind of have this area. I could have put some more vinca up here, but this is one of my two lambs here that died out right through the middle. And I think it's because for the most part where my yard slopes the worst is right here. You can see this is where I'm trying to grow my grass and the water comes right down through here and through here. And I've got a big hole that I need to fill in maybe with some pea gravel I can't decide if that's from water. There's some kind of weird bug or animal. But then we did more vinca here. Left room for the salvia. They are looking glorious. Um, filled in all these snapdragons. Left room for the petunias here to fill in. And we started a new swoop over here and finished off with those zinnias. So we will just keep watering these over the next couple days. Often when you come in and transplant like these, they look awful for a day or two. They lay down, they look wilted and dead. And then as those roots really start to establish, they perk back up. So we're gonna keep an eye on them for the next couple days. We will keep watering them and then we will see how they do. But all of these reseeded from last year, they are all free plants. So if they don't, they don't work, you know, I've lost nothing but a couple hours. Always worth a try. So now we are going to go across the way. Dun, dun. I've got more Vinca babies here you can see i had to take a couple out of this area for finishing up over there now i could put some back here but i don't really want vincas back planting my petunias i think i want something a little mid-layer tall there 
almost like the Gumbrina for back there. Betty, you going under the porch? Yeah, it's nice and cool under there. So I think I might move these vincas, just keep going over. There's more of those splayed out lobelia. I had vincas all around here last year. I don't think I want to put any here this year. I could put some right through here, but eventually these gumbrina will fill in and I want to leave room for those to do so. So really, I think the only other place I'm planning to put it is um, starting kind of here. And these marigolds are just not doing great. I might move them to a different spot. Do vinca through here. Clear out for this petunia. And maybe a little bit more down here. This, this angelonia is looking great. This angelonia is not quite as far along. So we'll see. I'm not 100% sure. I definitely need to come through though and take out all these babies just under this petunia and give them some breathing room. And these are the ones like, you can see those roots, like some of these that are so little, just get rid of them. I can't, I don't need to transplant every single Vinca baby in this whole garden. We'll be here for years. So I'm going to put y'all on fast forward and we are going to finish this side. Then we will go ahead and I will show you how I'm going to come in and divide off some of these larger lamb's ears to put over here. Okay, so I lied. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the lamb's ear first because I'm not 100% sure where I want vinca specifically in this bed. So despite just, instead of just taking everything out, I'm gonna start with the lamb's ear. So in order to divide this, I've got, there we go. Oh, he's totally getting dead, but he has no light right now, so of course he is. So when I first planted these three marigolds, this little guy started not looking great. Now he just looks dead. Um, but I think part of that is that this lamb's ear has just kept growing this way. And so, sorry, I keep finding weeds. We're gonna go ahead and divide him because we know he's big. So we're gonna come down to the base. We can see there's some dead part that's from the old growth. But right under here, so we can see a little clump. You see where this attaches. And I take a knife and I just go right in front of that node and I cut straight down. So this isn't a great example because it doesn't have a lot of roots, but there's a division with some roots at the bottom. Now, if you can get a slightly bigger division with better roots, that's even better. But this does have roots. We will plant him and we will see what happens. We'll keep going. So if all I wanted was one division, I could call that a day and I could fluff this back up and I could leave it, but I do want quite a few moves. So let's see if we can't get one with better roots. We're going to go in right here and I can see roots straight across. And then I'm going to get my little shovel.
Oh yeah, that's much better. This is more what you want to see. All these roots at the bottom. And of this, I really have probably three divisions I could take. So, there's the old dead part. That would have been the original. And then these three formed off of that. I'm going to cut right there and I'm going to do two divisions because this one doesn't have a super lot of roots. And then I will plant these two. One plant, two plants. Up. And if that is all I want to take off this side, which it probably is, I don't necessarily want to uh, take all my divisions from the same side of the plant. I'll go back and take some back there as well. Then you can see there is still plenty of healthy growth. That plant will keep planting planting growing and if this marigold was still alive he would now have plenty of sun to keep going as it is there's one down all right so now we're up in the new bed and i want to plant both of these little guys up here i'm thinking maybe one right there and one right here so in order to plant these it is not rocket science you are coming this one has a couple dead leaves on the bottom Whew. you know what i said i wasn't going to take them apart but they're already apart so we're going to do three we're going to go ahead and dig right here You don't have to dig a big spot. They're not huge plants. Dig far enough that all those roots can spread out. The mosquitoes are out, y'all. You know anything about me? It's that bugs and mosquitoes love me. That's why I garden in my leggings protect my legs from all the boards. All right, snug them in. Back and water him. But he should be good there. Do this one here. The hydrangea is a perennial. The lobelia may or may not come back in our climate and the petunia may or may not come back in our climate. We know the lamb's ear will come back. Lamb's ear is a perennial. So, put this guy here. Depending on how big some of these other plants get, we may have to move or cut him back in the future. But I, I like that kind of look. All right. Let's find a spot for our third guy with the most roots. Littlest plant, most roots. All right. Last but not least, I think we're going to put him right here.
bigger spot for all these roots. We'll just keep going now. All right, so we are all done. I did decide to go ahead and leave these right over here because I'm still not 100% sure about these snapdragons. I was thinking actually maybe some blue salvia back here would be nice. So we'll see, but in case I need them, it'll be just as easy to pull these out in a week or two than have to grow new ones. So I did um you can see created a little bit more space around this bush took some lambs here out there i think i need to do a little bit more over here but again i'm not 100 sure where i want all those lambs here oh I knew there was another weed under here these little baby ones <clears throat> always taking them out all right, so took out all the vinca here because I don't want any there. And we planted one, two, three, four, five lambs here up in this bed. We will see how they do. Typically with the lambs here, I've transplanted and divided them a bunch now. They do just fine. They take off, but they do take they take a while to start looking good. They kind of look like dead for a while. And then I did go ahead and just redistributed Vinca here, cleaned up this petunia and all the Vinca under it, cleaned up all the Vinca throughout this Angelonia, put some uh, lambs here here, and here, didn't want to transplant too much lambs there because as I work down here in this space, I know I'm going to need more down here. But then we did do one, two, three, and this bed. I'm not sure um, if these petunias come back next year, which they say sometimes in my zone petunias can, then I don't necessarily want to put the lambs here on the edges but they should do okay there. And again, you can always move them. And then I did a whole swath of vinca down here. And that is it for today. We got all the vinca done. Lambs year in at least quite a few. And all the zinnias moved. So we will give these a couple, couple weeks. <laughs> See what they can do. Also, I'm pretty sure that's pokeweed, but I'm not positive, so I've just been letting it grow. All right. I will see y'all later. Bye.